This is quite the demo. Okay. So what we have at this point is we have our front and back view. Now mine is very roughly done. <laughs> And I did it just very quickly for a demo for you. I am not actually planning on building this all the way through, okay? Uh, on the back, I've figured out how many pinch pots I need. How many do I need? Four, okay? Uh, I also have down below, I have the order of how I'm going to build, okay? Torso, head, tails, eyes, tongues, mm -hmm. and then legs, okay? So, what I have to do now, all I'm doing today, the only thing I can do today is build the pinch pots, okay? So, what I need to do is I'm going to start, I have these bricks of clay here. This, hopefully you're using permanent markers because it does get kind of messy. I'm not using permanent markers and so see it's getting the ink on the clay. That won't hurt anything, it just kind of makes everything a little bit more messy, but whatever, it's fine. What I want to do is I want to start with a ball of clay that is about the size of my torso, which this kind of works. This is a little bit smaller, which is what I want. A little bit smaller is good because we're going to make these hollow, which means they're going to get bigger. Does that make sense? So I'm going to start by pounding this into more of a roundish shape. And you're always going to start with your torso, you guys. And everybody's torso, I wanted your pieces complex enough that they are, you know, at least three pinch pots. If you're only making two pinch pots, you need to come and talk to me because you need something a little bit more complex. I'm trying to build y'all skills, okay? So, I've got a ball here, and now I'm gonna make a ball here. Now, remember when we made pinch pots before? Some of y'all's pinch pots just naturally took on different shapes and you went with it. That can't happen for this one. You have to be intentional with the shape. I can't just accidentally make a huge bowl shape and think that that's going to be the bottom of my of this this pinch pot. So you have to have a little bit more um, control over what you're doing. So I'm just going to start first with a nice pot that's about that size, and I'm going to start by pushing my thumb in in a round way. Remember, we kind of go round as we go in, kind of drills into the clay. And that also keeps it from sticking to your finger. I'm able to get my finger in and out pretty easy, okay? As I'm feeling, I don't want this, this pot to be really heavy anywhere or else it's not going to balance very well. Does that make sense to everybody? You want these as light as possible so that they're easy to balance. Once I get as deep as I can go safely without breaking through the bottom, I'm checking out my size. I'm always referring back to my draft and I'm just gonna keep it as narrow as possible because I can always make it wider. Does that make sense? I can always pinch a little bit more, make this even wider, um, as long as my, my walls aren't too stinking like narrow. But this is looking good. And I'm just going all the way around. I'm trying to get even walls. I'm getting a little bit of like unevenness on, on the lip, which for this, the lip is going to be super, super important. This edge right here is super important, okay? Because we're going to be attaching it. So this lip has to be wide enough. It can't be super skinny. This is flaring on a little bit too skinny here, okay? Because it has to not have enough slipping and scoring to join the other pinch pot, okay? So right now I'm kind of checking out the shape and I think it's a little bit too narrow right here. I want to like buff it up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and pinch out that wall. And I'm really just going around this pinch pot and making sure that it's a doable shape. Now, it doesn't need to look like my monster yet. It doesn't need to, you know, be anything fancy. It's pretty rough. But right there, I feel like I have, well, it's still a little bit narrow at the base. So now what I'm doing is I'm kind of curving it out, like petting it. That's a weird word but I'm petting it to, to make it a little bit more bulbous at the base. And that kind of, instead of pinching, instead of making the walls thinner by a lot with pinching, it's kind of reshaping them, okay? And so I think that looks a little bit better. Now my pinch pot right now is very, very moist. And so I don't want to leave it on its side or else it's going to flatten. So I'm just make sure it's nice and round because this side is round. If you had a really skinny, then maybe you could shape it right now. Okay, so before I set, let this sit down, I want to make sure that both sides are going to work. 
and this is good. Okay, so I'm going to put this down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing the same thing. I'm going to kind of try to make it take on that general shape before I start. And I'm going to start pinching. And I'm going to go a little bit faster this time, which I don't recommend for all of you. I do recommend that you take your time, but just for the sake of this demo, I'm doing this real rough. You guys are going to take a little bit more time than what I'm doing right now. So I've gone all the way in. See how chubby it is at the base here, or at the rim? That's too chubby. It's too heavy there. So I'm going to start checking it, and it goes this way. So I definitely need to do some of that petting. Just reshaping it. I don't know if you guys can see. And I'm on the lookout for little hairline cracks. If you get hair, I didn't, my clay is so moist right now and, and the weather outside is so moist, I didn't get cracks like we did in August. Okay, so it should be in some ways a little bit easier to do right now, this time of year. Now what happens if you make these pinch pots and they're way too small? Like it doesn't actually take up the size. Well, you gotta restart. Okay, you're gonna need to go re-wedge the clay, add a little bit more clay to it, it's better to have too much clay than not enough clay, okay? So, whoops. What I want to do as I go through is I'm double checking. My draft is pretty accurate. So as long as I make both of them fit the draft, they should fit each other pretty easily. But I'm still checking and noticing that that is a nice fit right now, okay? That lines up really nicely, and both of those are nice and flat. There's going to be nice joinings. And I'm not worried about this one being super pointy because I'm going to put a head on top of it. So who cares if it's pointy under there? Okay, so I've got two that work really nice for my capsule. It looks like a pill shape. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make this one. And so I've got this big brick here. And I do recommend that you, um, we're going to be using the wedging table to do this. So we're going to be a little bit cramped. But even though, I, what I don't want to do is, like that's a smaller amount of clay, does that make sense? What I don't want to do is I don't want to cut off a skinny piece of clay and then reform it because what am I going to put right in the middle? Air bubble. Air bubble. So that's not what I want to do. I'm going to set that clay aside. I don't want to have to wedge this. So even though this is way too much clay, it's more than I need, I'm going to make sure that I get at least that much of it and then cut it again. So let's go that direction, and then I'll cut it this direction, and that might be a little, that's too much clay too. <clears throat> go right there, yeah. So that's looking even, that's too much clay, my, my goodness kids. Let's go there. Okay, whatever this is, it's going to be perfect. Alright, so now I have enough clay there. When I go from a brick shape, I want to push in on it, I want to slap it in to make it a ball, I don't want to bend the clay over to create more and more air bubbles. Once I got it into a ball shape, I'll be ready to go. So I'm just kind of smacking out the corners right now. And then once I get close to a ball, I can even start, but don't do too much of this. If you do this, what's happening is your hands, look how wet my hands are, they're sucking out all the moisture in the clay and then the clay is going to crack easier. Okay, so I want to try to do this as little as possible. I see some of you guys, I don't know if you're anxious to get started or you're just kind of chilling with your friends and talking and you're not paying attention to what you're doing and then you end up sucking all the moisture out of your clay. you got to have your wits about you kids, okay? So don't be fooling around with this clay. Alright, so I'm thinking this is good. I'm going to start with the hole here. And I'm going to show you on this one, I intentionally took a little bit too much clay because I want to show you how you can fix that if you take too much clay. That's a better problem than not enough. Not enough clay means you got to restart, okay, because our goal is to build this exactly the size of the draft, okay, for your grade, um, for management in the kiln. The worst thing you can do is build your pots bigger than these pots. Okay, because the weight gets unruly and the size of the kiln, I, I've given you your maxes. Everybody makes sense? We've got to get all these things through. Now notice, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, pet out, like slide out the walls. I'm just kind of pressing the walls. And notice how it's much bigger right now. Okay, 
That is okay because actually, notice how my pot, if I put it right on, I might want to cut it on an angle. And that's kind of hard to imagine. Um, but if you have to cut things, it's good to make your pots a little bit longer than what you need because it gives you some leverage or leeway. Next class, we'll cut them, okay? So I'm making this one a little bit too big on purpose so that next time I'll show you how to manage that. But it is a little bit too big or too long. You can see here next to it, it's about a half inch, three quarters of an inch too long there. But that's okay because what that allows me to do is it allows me to cut an angle and attach it in a different way, okay? So it's actually to my benefit, if that makes sense. So I just want to double check all this. I'm going to hold this here. I'm going to add this on right here. And now I have a nice shape. So notice I could attach this maybe even a little bit higher. I kind of like it more like that. And we're looking at it and that's pretty comparable in size. Okay. So I'm going to put those down and I have one more to do. I'm going to take, this one's pretty good. Same thing. And then the last thing I'm going to do today, and I'm not going to make you watch me watch, make the last one because I think you guys kind of get it. Are you guys understanding what's going on? Yeah. But I'm just, before I finish today, these are going to be setting up over the weekend. Okay? So we want to keep these fairly moist. We want to, when we bag these today, we want to make sure that there's no cracks anywhere because we're going to be gone for two days. Okay? So we don't want these to totally go to waste. Now, I don't have a board with me, but let's all pretend. Okay, here. Oh, dear. I don't have a board. Let me go grab a board. When you guys are bagging, I would make sure that you have, if you're bag, I, I like to bag with two bags, you guys. I like to get double bags. And where in the classroom are the bags at? The worm. They're in the worm, in the caterpillar. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to grab these two bags. That way if one, I like two bags anyway. Even if your bags don't have, have holes in them, I like having two bags. Just makes me feel more safe and secure. Now next class, when we assemble these, we don't want them like leather hard. We want them wet leather hard. We want them to be, it's like, leather hard is a little bit too hard to be attaching things late in the game. And we want some give so that we can squish it a little bit, but we want it firm enough that it's going to hold its shape. So we don't want to spray the pots because we want them to get drier. Everybody feeling me? And it's so wet. Is it supposed to rain this weekend? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's wet this weekend and right now and even on today that it's not supposed to rain. It's pretty gloomy outside. So we want to be cautious. It's better to be too wet than not wet enough. So what we're going to do is we're not going to spray these guys. But inside of the bag, the inside bag, just the first bag that you put on, I'm going to do maybe four sprays. That way it doesn't totally dry out. That might have even been too much. And I'm just going to wrap it nice and tight. That way, hopefully, and you know, that might be too wet when we come back, but maybe just one bag. If you spray it, one bag. If you don't spray it, two bags. Sound like a deal? And then your job is to make sure that none of this bag you can take, you know, just make sure that this is really tight. I like to spaghetti wrap this bit. I don't know why I said spaghetti wrap, but like a bread bag and make sure it's nice and tight so that the bag doesn't blow off. Everybody understand what's going on? Okay, who's got a stamped draft? You guys are going to go get your clay. Ready, set, go. Wait, 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 one thing. If you have any extra clay that needs to go in your Ziploc baggie, everybody needs to check your Ziploc baggies. If you don't have a Ziploc baggie, I'll give you one. It needs to have your name on it, though. Ready, set, go. Okay, if you guys need me to check off your pieces, come on over here. I will do that now. Oh.